What did you learn listening to Joe Biden? Just now at the press conference, uh, I learned that insofar as Joe Biden is concerned, uh, today's meeting was a success. It was a positive step forward towards a relationship of stability and predictability between the United States and Russia. Stability and predictability, it seems like you're alluding to the last meeting in Helsinki where we saw that joint press conference between Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump. Well, that's the reason why there was no joint press conference today. It's also the reason why the summit meeting was held in Geneva rather than in Helsinki. Uh, today's summit meeting uh, was the demonstration of how two responsible leaders can converse, can exchange views fully and frankly without its becoming a circus, as most unfortunately was the encounter of uh, President Biden's predecessor with President Putin in Helsinki last a couple of years ago. There was that uh, moment in the press conference where Joe Biden pointed to the fact that uh, you have uh, Russia, which has uh, a long border with China, and it's not in Russia's interest to have a new Cold War with the United States. It was that the right tone to employ? I don't think that he was suggesting anything uh, to be in Russia's best interests or not. In fact, he made a point of saying that uh, this was not a judgment that it was appropriate for him to make. He was suggesting to President Putin that in the consideration of the position of Russia vis-a-vis -vis its various neighbors, naturally stability and predictability is in Russia's interest as it is in the interests of the rest of the world. Yeah, stability and predictability, and it's an increasingly unpredictable world. We heard each one uh, give their take on recent spectacular uh, cyber attacks. We're going to take a look at a France 24 report showing just how this one issue, in a way, became the core of this meeting. For a first-of-its-kind operation, an undeniable success for the new ransomware task force in the United States, and one that could shake up the architecture of online extortion. Following a cyber attack on the operator of one of the country's largest fuel pipelines, U.S. authorities recovered most of the multi-million dollars in Bitcoin that had been paid in ransom. We deprived a cyber criminal enterprise of the object of their activity their financial proceeds and funding. For financially motivated cyber criminals, especially those presumably located overseas, cutting off access to revenue is one of the most impactful consequences we can impose. Federal investigators followed the ransom as it moved through a labyrinth of at least 23 different accounts belonging to hacking collective DarkSide. A federal judge then permitted authorities to seize the funds from one of the accounts. Following a recent uptick in cyber attacks, the Biden administration has prioritized a more aggressive approach to fighting ransomware and to further examining how cryptocurrencies enable such crimes. Ransomware and digital extortion pose a national security and an economic security threat to the United States. The Department of Justice, working with our partners, is committed to using all of our tools at our, all the tools at our disposal to disrupt these networks. The relevant government departments are set to coordinate anti-ransomware protocols similarly to the way they handle terrorism. While the Department of Homeland Security will soon require all pipeline companies to report significant cyber attacks, officials have also announced the creation of 24-hour emergency centers to handle major hacking incidents. And we're in the company of uh, former U.S. Ambassador to Finland, uh, Charles Adams, here by the banks of Lake Geneva in this uh, special edition. When you watch that report, you ask yourself the question, um, you know, throughout the press conference, we heard Joe Biden asking aloud, what is in Russia's interest? Is it in Russia's interest to cooperate on this issue of cybersecurity with the United States? Very much so. Very much so. I think the message that President Biden communicated is that uh, cybersecurity is in the joint interests of Russia and the United States. Because this is where we get into a gray area, right? You have, on the one hand, uh, the fact that these m 
or we don't know because we're not we're not we're not uh, investigators. Cyber criminals. Uh, U.S. says they're operating from Russian territory. It's not the Russian state as such that's responsible. So we're in this gray zone. So is it in Vladimir Putin's interest to cooperate fully with the United States or to use Cold War parlance, make mischief? Uh, again, uh, it's not my position nor that of President Biden to counsel that's President what he said. Putin. Uh, I, I think that President Putin uh, will wish to contemplate what is the reality, namely that when it comes to capacity and capability in matters of cyber aggression or cyber interference, uh, there is a drastic asymmetry between the capability of the United States and that of Russia. And President Biden did make it clear that uh, in the event of a cyber attack traceable directly or indirectly to Russia, that there would be appropriate response and a measured response. And I think that uh, in this uh, he was believed by President Putin. Believed by President Putin. One final question for you. We um, had the uh, uh, U.S. press pose questions to Vladimir Putin, quite a few of them. We didn't hear from the Russian media uh, asking questions to, to Joe Biden. You sorry about that, that we didn't hear from the Russian press? Oh, I expect uh, that uh, one will be reading about all of this in the Russian press. Uh, my understanding from listening to President Biden is that uh, there had been an invitation to the Russian press to submit questions. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, there was a less uh, interventionist attitude, shall we say. Because now after the summit's over and everyone starts to pack up, it's how it's all put through the ringer and put into little clips on social media. And the Russians are pretty good at that. Well, uh, so too are the Americans, actually, when they put their mind to it. So uh, both sides are going to be spinning this through the channels of communication that are available to them, including social media. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Charles Adams, uh, former ambassador uh, to the United States. Thanks for being with us here on France 24. Thank you. My pleasure.